Welcome to chapel in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Pastor Smith, you remember him, Pastor Smith, he has asked me to announce a theme verse and theme for Concordia's 2015-2016 academic year. This verse and theme were chosen by campus ministry leaders along with Pastor Smith. Uh, the last couple Sunday nights they got together to hammer this out and they sorted through many, many verses to come up with this. Uh, the verse is 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 through 11, and it reads, For God is not destined, has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another, build one another up, just as you are doing. And they've taken this theme, or the, the verse, and they've come up with the theme, Wake Up and Live. I guess there'll be no falling asleep during chapel this next year. But I can see many different ways of utilizing this text throughout the coming year to inspire us to learn and to grow in our faith. The invocation, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our reading is 1 John 5, 1 through 8, the epistle lesson for this past Sunday. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. Appreciate Pastor being up with me because I think that he will appreciate what I'm gonna say first. Two uh, popular folk hymns that we sang a lot back in the 70s, went like this. Take his body, drink his blood, and we'll sing a song of love. Allelu, 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 alleluia. Another one was, and Jesus said, come to the water, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty, you won't be denied. The beauty of God using water and blood as his sacraments to us in, in baptism and Holy Communion is that they are both life-giving. The Lord created us with both blood and water coursing through us, sustaining life. We must not lose blood or we die, and we must have water or we die. So with a focus on one of those life essentials, I'd like us to consider the question this morning, who needs water? Isaiah 43, the wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. Psalm 78, he brought streams out of a rocky crag and made water flow down like rivers. Water, who needs it? Well, quite clearly, we all do. We know from life that our bodies certainly do. We know from God's word that our souls need water too. Psalm 42, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. I have a story to share about a river, a true story from my own experience. When I say that it's a tale about a river which dried up, I often get a few smiles from anyone who grew up or taught or went to school in Southeast Michigan, but only if they're old enough. 
I actually grew up down near River Forest. So did, so did he. I lived across the Des Plaines River in Maywood, and I'll get back to that river in a minute. I was fond of River Forest, having grown up with it, just like Milwaukee people have always grown up with, with our Concordia, but I was eager, as we say, to go off to college. So I became a proud Seward grad from out in Nebraska, but only after two lovely years at Concordia Junior College, Ann Arbor. Isaiah 35. Then the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue will shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. A good way to view the many water images from Scripture is that if life is like a journey, then maybe it's like a river as well. A nice, steady current represents times of peace and prosperity, while rapids and fast water are challenges or decisions. When the current slows and the river is sluggish, nothing much is going on in our life. Nothing particularly good or positive is happening. When our river gets dirty, when pollutants get in, that's sin, plain and simple. And as it gets lower and lower, that might be hardships, dangers, or threats, losses in our life, pain, illness, suffering, or, or broken relationships. The health of a river as an aquatic ecosystem is not just clear water, but clean and unspoiled water with a healthy habitat and inhabitants all in balance and harmony as the Lord created it, unpolluted by human communities and also unthreatened by invaders, invasive species like the tiny zebra and quagga mussels and those huge Asian jumping carp poised to enter Lake Michigan and threaten the Great Lakes themselves. After the big head and silver carp escaped the Arkansas fish farms during floods and invaded the Mississippi River, one of the smaller tributary, tributaries that's now absolutely infested with them is the Des Plaines River, which begins here in Wisconsin, actually, down in Racine County. So when I mention the Des Plaines River now, it's with a sadness because it provided me a, as a secluded and peaceful setting as a kid. You could get off by yourself in the woods, and, and Thatcher Woods is a decent-sized forest preserve, and the quiet river, muddy though it was back in the 60s, still represented a tiny slice of up north to me. And I, for one, could dream myself away from Cook County, Illinois, and the other six and a half million people all around me, and imagine being up in northern Michigan or Wisconsin or Minnesota in more of a wilderness setting. Isaiah 41, I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. Joel 1, even the wild animals pant for you. The streams of water have dried up and fire has devoured the open pastures. Water, who needs it? The beautiful aquatic setting of our campus Sitting on the bluff above Lake Michigan right over here is a priceless jewel we must never take for granted. And our new environmental center stands as a monument to our dedication to the health of the Great Lakes. Among those of you who work and learn there, our science majors, graduate students in environmental education, our pre-student teachers, and we also host real children with real teachers from local Southeast Wisconsin schools, including many of our Lutheran schools. Revelation 22, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. So the question of the day is, who needs water? Land animals need water, including us. The creatures of the air need water, and most of all, the aquatic species obviously need water. And people also need God the way all life needs water. Just to remind us and to reassure us, his word is full of promises, truths, and proverbs, which his people connect to everyday life like these. Jeremiah 31, they will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble. Revelation 7, 
For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And in Jesus' own words, we find the longing for and the blessing of water as essential for those he came to save from the day he spoke them down the centuries to us. Right here, right now, John 4. Whoever drinks the water I give will never be thirsty. The water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. John 7. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. But in Ezekiel 31, God compared a fallen nation to a woods of majestic cedar trees. I held back its streams and its abundant waters were restrained and all the trees of the forest withered away. Which brings us back to my tale about a river which dried up. 50 years ago, makes me laugh to think about it, but it's true. 50 years ago, the brochures I saw as a high school freshman in January of 1965 showed a gorgeous brand new campus in lower Michigan. The gem, maybe, at that time of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod spread out along the Huron River. Several shots focused on, you know, happy Concordia students frolicking out there in, in, uh, in kayaks on a broad spread stretch of the river with our distinctive Ann Arbor Chapel visible in the background. Funny thing though, to this day, I have no idea where those kayaks were stored or how you check them out. Because from 1968 to 1970, the Huron River was bone dry except for a sluggish little trickle after heavy rain. From Ypsilanti down toward Detroit, that river was an eastern version of a dry gulch. Somewhere upstream, a new dam had been installed, or was being installed, and when its gates were completely closed, the riverbed became a prairie, and I never really knew why. I don't have any dry riverbed stories, but the point there was the total destruction of a river ecosystem, an underwater habitat or community, water. Who needs it? Well, all of life needs water, and all the aquatic life in a river depends on the river itself, not just the health of the river, but its essence, not just the quality of the water, but the very presence of life-giving water. Because whether a river dries up fast or dries up slowly, the increasing pressure on the life that depends upon it is enormous. Job 14, as the water of a lake dries up or a riverbed becomes parched and dry, so a man lies down and does not rise. The good news from our Father and Creator is a Redeemer who came to open closed gates, a Savior who keeps those floodgates open and keeps the river flowing, because in a way, He is our river. Jesus is the water of life. Water, who needs it? We do. So as Christian professionals and pre-professionals, Christocentric educators and scholars, as Christ-centered servant leaders, let us thank our Father again for leading us beside quiet waters, for water and the Word and the Holy Spirit and our Savior who gives us living water. 1 John 5. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood. Revelation 21. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Amen.